Where is that apology anyway? That's what Republican Congressman Thaddeus McCotter of the 11th District of Michigan is wondering this morning after the president refused to apologize to Sergeant James Crowley of the Cambridge Police Department. Congressman McCotter is considering a resolution in the House to demand that I'm sorry to the officer. The president said acted stupidly in the arrest of a prominent Harvard professor. Good morning and welcome to Congressman McCotter. We've had about 48 hours uh, or 70. 72 hours to let this whole racial conversation begin. What are we saying about it, Congressman? Well, thanks for having me. I view this really less as a racial incident, the presidential incident. You have a situation where the president, in a local police incident, has decided that, though he has admitted his bias and his lack of knowledge of the facts, nevertheless decided to call into conduct the professional conduct of Officer Crowley. That when Sergeant Crowley, as an individual citizen, finds himself in a situation with the President of the United States making that determination, it has legal and professional consequences potentially down the road for the sergeant. What the President has done is not only said it once, he's reaffirmed it, and he's also said that he believes it's part of his, quote, portfolio to do this in the future. I think that this is very unfair to any average citizen to have the President make that type of determination, again, admitting bias and a lack of knowledge. So what I think is necessary is for the president simply to apologize to Officer Crowley, retract the statement, and then let us move forward and hopefully avoid instances like this in the future from the executive branch. Yeah, Congressman, you talk about the executive branch, and you know, these news conferences compared to when I used to cover the White House several decades ago, they are so scripted. And this uh, this question came up, President Obama chose to inject himself into this. He didn't need to do that. And, uh, and as you point out, now we have the resulting controversy, uh, which I guess is going to end with a beer, which I find very bizarre at the White House. But then again, as you're pointing out, there's been no apology issued. Uh, Barack Obama, I don't need to remind anybody that followed the campaign in the past year, uh, has had to, on several occasions, call people to apologize for things that he has said, uh, whether on the campaign trail or later in the White House. And you're saying he needs to do it again. Yes, it's a very inequitable position for the Sergeant Crowley to be asked to do stuff by the president. Remember, the president has said that he is a friend of Professor Gates. And so now Officer Crowley can find himself sitting in the White House with the other party that was involved in the incident and the other party's friend. Again, this is not, it's very difficult for Sergeant Crowley now to not go. It's very difficult for him to go. And this just points out the problem with the president injecting himself into this. Mm -hmm. And again, the easiest way to resolve the situation is for the president just to admit, apologize for it, and retract the statement, because the retraction of the statement would be very helpful to leaving an objective process in place for the proper authorities to get to the bottom of it. This is speculation on my part, but I have a feeling that because um, Sergeant Crowley is in such an untenable position, and as well as the the deep offense that many police officers, white and black, across America took at uh, the acting stupidly comment, we're probably going to hear some tapes from um, this incident, the night of the incident, because we know they were made. And I have a feeling it's not going to look good for the president's friend, Mr. Gates. Well, I think that, again, this is part of the problem. It's also caused for all of us is the fact that now it is a national issue. It is an issue where you're going to have a whole lot of attention paid to it. And what's going to happen to the parties involved, both Sergeant Crowley and Professor Gates, is that everything that happened there is now going to be analyzed, it's going to be political, and you're going to have an objective trier, of uh, objective observer, the right authority, trying to get to the bottom of this. And it, it's kind of every officer has a very grave concern that you could respond to an incident, you could run into a politically connected individual, if there's an incident, then the politically connected individual gets his politician friends to bring pressure to bear upon you. And this kind of, I think, is the biggest jackpot that any officer might have encountered in such a situation. Here's a question I heard from uh, several African-American friends of mine over the weekend. This is the question, the bottom line for them. They think that most cops are guilty of racial profiling. Do you? No. No, I don't. And I think that that's not even at issue right now. What's at issue is the power of the president. If I would ask people, all Americans, to say that if you found yourself in a similar situation as the officer, where you're in the performance of your job, 
something occurred. And then the President of the United States, who said he had no knowledge of the facts and an admitted bias, decided to say that you had acted improperly. I think that you could then understand the inequality of the relationship between a president with the power, as we've seen here in Michigan, to have a CEO of GM resign, now applying that power to a sergeant in the Cambridge Police Department. All right, Congressman, let me ask you quickly before we let you go, uh, what's your unemployment rate look like up there? We're at 15.2%. Wow. And it's going to continue to climb, unfortunately, because many of the announced job losses from our automotive companies, Chrysler and GM, as well as our suppliers and the dealers, many of those have been announced but have yet to been to have actually occurred. So it's very dark, dark times for Michigan. We're going to get through it. We're going to get to the ray of hope at the end, but we know it's a hard road. Well, you know, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, has said that the health care measure, the reform measure, is an economic stimulus. Are you going to see any economic stimulus taking place as a result in Michigan? Well, I think like the rest of the country, when you pass a trillion-dollar stimulus, it's supposed to be a temporary measure that focuses more on government and on program, pet programs than it does on actual job creation. We're going to continue, unfortunately, to see less and less and less of a hopeful outlook. What we have to do here in Michigan, we understand, is we're going to have to try to fight through it. And we know the job creation comes from the private sector, not the public sector. And hopefully this administration and this Congress will start to understand that and make the job of getting through this difficult time easier. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, Congressman, uh, are you definitely going to introduce that resolution calling on the president to issue an apology? Is that a definite? It's it's really, I hope it's to make it a moot point if the president apologizes. That's the goal. Okay. So you will introduce it if he doesn't? Yep. All All right. right.